Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Today our topic is politics and religion. Uh, especially because the topic involves Islam and as you know Islam is a politics. Islam is not really uh, a religion as much as it is a gang uh, involving uh, power and money and sex. Uh, the topic is about what's happening uh, and we spoke before about, about uh, the sanctions which is Trump uh, he activated against Iran. And if you remember a few weeks ago, I said to you that things is going to go crazy because Iran is going to suffer badly from what happened or what's happening. The website in the front of us, this is the website of Hezbollah. The official website of Hezbollah. You know, when you read the news in the official website of Hezbollah, you will think that you are reading the news of the mullahs of Iran. For very simple reason, this is a TV station and this is a militant terrorist. They are run, paid, trained by Iran. So when we say Hezbollah, we are talking, we are saying literally Iran. Actually, the Hezbollah is a party, major party of Iran. And this is a statement taken from the Quran where the Quran says, Why in the Hezbollah? Uh, you know, that, that, uh, that's uh, the Hezbollah, the party of Allah, are the victorious. That's what Hezbollah means. The word Hezb means uh, party. So they are the party of Allah. Allah have party. Uh, so the news is coming that things is getting more and more hot as we expected before. And uh, if we go to the Islamic Republic of Iran, official government website as we see in the screen you will notice always the Iranian government uh, they play the game of uh, like um, I am nice he is not uh, I'm a victim he is a criminal uh, we are good they are bad uh, they want war we don't want war uh, we want peace they want uh, destruction but in fact, Iran in, is involved right now as we speak in many wars in the in, in the many wars, wars in the area. The war in Syria, the war in Afghanistan, the war in Somalia, the war in Yemen, Libya, uh, and for sure uh, Iraq. Big big deal. <clears throat> and the arms of Iran is expanded all the way to Israel too. All the major terrorist groups in uh, Israel, they are sponsored by two major sources of money, Iran and the Prince of Qatar. Uh, but the Iranian, they are different from the Arab. <clears throat> you see, the Arab... Uh, we can say they are, um, I'm, I'm talking about the government. Uh, the Arab government, they knew their size, they knew their limitation, and they never dare to say, uh, we want to destroy America. They knew that they are weak, they knew that they are nothing, they knew that their army cannot even handle a war with America for five minutes. Like, we have an experience before with someone, his name is Saddam Hussein, uh, it did not take you, I say, even 24 hours to be in the heart of Baghdad. Uh, <clears throat> so the difference between the Arab government who sponsor terrorism and the Iranian government who sponsor terrorism, that the Iranian government, they claim that they are sponsoring jihad for the ones who they are suffering from discrimination for those who they are uh, oppressed for those who they are uh, uh, fighting for their, their rights so iran does not hide that they sponsor hamas actually the agenda of iran about sponsoring hamas is very simple you see when the khomeini came to the office the plan was simple we are Shia and we are the, not the majority of the Muslims. And even many of the Muslims don't even consider us as Muslims. So how we can penetrate 
the Sunni system. So the first thing they did, they start sponsoring the Muslims Brotherhood. This is why you see right now in what's happening around us, everybody is against Iran except the Prince of Qatar and the Muslims Brotherhood around the world. So all the Sunni are against Iran except the Prince of Qatar, who is a Sunni, and the Muslims Brotherhood because the Muslim Brotherhood was fed, feeded, paid for many years by the mullahs of Iran. Actually, the first center of the Muslim Brotherhood ever was paid by the mullahs of Iran. So, the relationship between the Muslim Brotherhood and uh, Iran is very tight. If you remember just a few weeks ago, we heard that uh, uh, Trump, he's, trying, he's saying that he might list the Muslim Brotherhood in as a terrorist group. And then suddenly, Trump stopped talking about it. I mean, isn't it, this is weird? I mean, this guy, what's wrong with you? You know, you say to us, he said uh, two years ago, that the Prince of Qatar, he should stop supporting terrorism. And then he stopped talking about it. Same, two weeks ago, he said he is going to list the Muslims Brotherhood as a terrorist group. And now he stopped talking about it. The reason they do stop talking about it, they are trying to, let us say, hold the arms of Qatar. If you stop, if you don't stop getting closer and closer to Iran, we are going to break your arms, which is the Muslims Brotherhood. So the Muslim Brotherhood is a is a like is a way to use a pressure on his uh, in uh, on the enemy of USA uh, and Trump. He is playing this game. If we go to uh, uh, Yemen, this is the website of an organization called Ansarullah. Ansarullah. All of them, they are they end with Allah, Hezbollah, Ansarullah, whatever Allah. Ansarullah is another terrorist group who they are Shia or a form of Shia in Yemen. And this is their leader. And as you see, he is a very holy man holding the Quran in his hand. Even when he goes to the bathroom, he don't leave the Quran. He's a very decent man. And he's a drug dealer. Actually, all his fighters, I can show you tons of videos. You know, uh, Yemen have a have an, uh, uh, I don't know what to, what to how to say it in English. Uh, like they they have a problem that almost every citizen he eat hashish. They don't smoke it; they eat it. So I don't know if you go and see uh, people in Yemen. Uh, let me see if I can show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> I'll try to find you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you might look and you might you might wonder I mean what's happening here I will, I will give you an example this is a fighter for Allah but do, what do you see in his mouth anyone notice with me something strange I mean this guy now he's saluting but what is that in his mouth this is called al -Qat. It's the same as hashish, but they don't smoke it, they chew it. And this is why always they are high. Always. Like you ask him, what's your name? He said, my name? Are you asking me my name? So you might find a very funny uh, look wherever you go. Hey, everybody is a chewing al -Qat. Look at this. When you see this picture yourself, you might think maybe this guy, he have something with his teeth. Maybe he could not afford to go to the clinic. 
So al Houthiyin are uh, a group of Shia, but uh, they are all high. And you see them fighting, like shooting at the Saudi, as an example. But when they shoot, they scream saying, death to America, death to Israel. I mean, imagine, I shoot at the Chinese, and I scream, death to America, death to Israel. All right? By the way, if any of you would like to take a selfie like this, let it, just send it to me. Like, look look at in, this, in the picture. Everybody have the same, the same look, the same faith. You know, look. Everybody, you know, look at this guy. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. Okay, so you know when when we talk about this uh, 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 Ansar Allah organization, and this is the organization we're talking about. Those are literally an arm militant armed forces in Yemen working literally for Iran so look Iran you know you might think Iran is just limited in the country it's called Iran so now when we go in war we are going to go in war with Hezbollah in Lebanon as you see and and by the way, they have a live TV too. You can watch it. And with Hamas and a jihad in Israel, in Gaza, Hezbollah in Lebanon, Ansarullah in Yemen, Al Shabab in Somalia, and in Iraq, we have something that's called Al Hashd al Shabi. Let us show you Al Hashd al Shabi. <coughs> Those are Al Hashd al Shabi. And you will see they have the same flags as Hezbollah. They are the same, it's the same. And you will see the guy, the fighters here, they are wearing mullah clothes, if you notice. So the war with Iran is not going to be limited to Iran. And this is what Iran trying to explain to everybody. That if you fight with us, you're not going to fight Iran alone. We have our puppet everywhere. We have hundreds of thousands of fighters in Iraq, in Syria, in Lebanon, in Libya, and Yemen. And even they have camps in South America, in Venezuela. So what is going to happen next? <clears throat> Let us open the map, which is going to be more useful for us to explain better. Okay, we open Google. Here we go. This is the Islamic Republic of Iran, as you see it. We will zoom a little bit. So you guys can see better. If you look at the area here, based on the information we just gave you, which is very accurate information, we are not making things up. So Iran 
or whoever is going to fight with Iran, he have to be ready to have many front lines of war. Here we have Ansarullah. Here we have the Muslims Brotherhood. Here we have Al Hashd al Shabi. Here we have Al Hashd al Shabi too. In Lebanon, especially the south, we have Hezbollah. So now, America of, or USA is going to attack Iran, and I believe they are going to attack only if they have to. I don't think they want to attack really unless they have to. So in order for USA to attack, then they have to get ready for troublemakers they will be in Iraq. As you know, in US in, in Iraq we have a very very huge embassy. But as I know, the embassy in Iraq is not really an embassy, it's like a huge military camp, and they were able to survive many years which means nobody can really attack it. So I'm not worried about Iraq. And if the Hashd al-Shabi in Iraq try to play games with the American, the American will, they will whip them out of the ground. No mercy. And they tried that before, actually. Same in Syria. And in Lebanon, Hezbollah, if Hezbollah try to play games, I am sure that Israel will take care. Because Israel will be happy to take care of Hezbollah. And Israel is here. So, those who they have, let us say, uh, the troublemakers, we mentioned them, Ansarullah, Hezbollah, Hamas, they will not really cause a trouble to USA. They will cause a troubles to the friends of USA. Like maybe to Israel. Or let us say uh, to the Saudi. Or to Emirat. Qatar will not suffer from anything because the Qatari, they are like, uh, you know, the prince of Qatar, he is a very coward man. He, he, he is like a puppet who ask a big dog to come and live in his house and sleep in his bed, with, in the bed of his wife. So nobody will come and shoot him in the bed. And this is exactly what the Prince of Qatar he did by bringing USA to be uh, the biggest force or the big, it's, it's the biggest base for, for America in the, in the Middle East, paid totally by the Prince of Qatar. So, now, if Iran would attack uh, the base of the American in Qatar, they have to attack Qatar, but Qatar, their friend. So there's a problem here, and I don't think even the Iranian will dare to shoot anything at the American. So what will happen is, and I, this is what I expect, I expect that the Iranian, they will ask their puppet, those, Ansarullah, Hezbollah in Lebanon, Al Hashd and the Shia militant in Syria, Shia militant in Iraq, to do attacks, terrorist attacks from time to time, annoying attacks, like we bite and we run, in order to put the pressure on anyone who will try to attack Iran. It's like a warning. However, things it might go out of hand the Iranian they are playing a very dirty stupid game because if those terrorist attacks were able to do something very harmful to USA USA is going to respond in a very harsh way so Iranian until now they are trying really to make USA angry they make speeches we will fight America death to America etc but in reality they knew that they are fart they are nothing but fart they cannot even survive. I don't think they can survive even a week 
fight in USA because USA when they attack if a war happened really is not going to be like hitting uh, uh, a warehouse it's not going to be it's going to be like finish them it's one time deal because if the American let the Iranian survive and I'm talking about the Iranian government here the the, the, uh, the uh, terrorist uh, regime not about the Iranian people if they let them survive by hitting them little hit that hit will make them strong or let us say stronger remember this uh, this uh, mullahs in Iran they are taking over the country under the propaganda of death to America and death to Israel which mean if you attack them little hit that make them legitimate you see we are fighting America we are fighting you, you hit them like you you spank them but you did not destroy them that will make them stronger and that will get, make them gain more control they will look like heroes in the front of those who sponsor them or support them in the same time they will be able to silence anyone who oppose them because now we are in war and when you are in war everybody have to be quiet so Iran will not dare really to do any bad behavior against USA but they will use as I said those puppet here and here and here and here to do some troublemaking as an example they might try to close uh, Babel Mandab which is a narrow sea uh, uh, entrance uh, to the Red Sea and that mean Egypt will suffer badly from this because Egypt um, in case you do not know there's many ships they go here from, from from the ocean and they enter into the Red Sea and then they go through the tunnel of a Suez which is here which Egypt make a lot of money from it going out to the Mediterranean so if this gate here close Egypt will suffer badly and that means Egypt will go in war immediately with whoever will try to close this territory if Iran tried to close this territory here which is Hormuz uh, the whole world will go against Iran Iran will never dare to do so because the first one will go against them is China most of the oil of China is coming from Saudi Arabia so the problem is Iran cannot do really much except using their puppet the terrorist groups which is exist in many countries but those they cannot really help much they can hurt they can bite they can do an explosion here explosion there but that will make the enemy more angry and even more aggressive now the Saudi Sonia Azam who is Sonia Azam I don't know who Sonia Azam the Saudi uh, they are desperately praying to their God Allah that Iran will go in war with USA because the Saudi they bought a lot of weapon from USA but all of us we knew that the Saudi army is a shish kebab army I mean in the best scenario they might do some farting but they cannot and they are no match to go in war with Iran United Arab Emirates is so small tiny country the total population of Emirates is not even the size of my family without counting the kids so those countries they are their existence is useless except uh, USA can use their huge lands as bases and already actually the king of Saudi Arabia and Emirat they ask USA to re-spread their army in those countries again which means obviously they are preparing for something so as we speak supposedly the Saudi 
they are preparing now for a conference for all the Arab leaders in the Gulf. And when we say the Arab leaders in the Gulf and they will invite Egypt, that's mean Air Emirat uh, uh, and uh, and what happened with this thing? Emirat and, uh, uh, and Egypt and uh, uh, Kuwait, they will not involve, they are coward. But even Kuwait, they are they are in debt to USA. USA is the one who gave them their lands. They cannot even say no to USA. So they are inviting many uh, uh, leaders, Arab leaders, and they will meet in Mecca here. And the purpose of this meeting, the King of Saudi Arabia, he is trying to make a fighting front from the Arab countries against Iran. But I guarantee you this fighting front is useless because they are the same they will not change i mean egypt you know they might say to the saudi we will support you if you pay us it's about money for them emirat they have no choice to support or not qatar they are the enemy of saudi so the only the, 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 there is a few countries only can involve because they have to and they have no choice so the only protection those countries they have is usa usa and israel this is why not long time ago we start hearing hearing that the, the the crown prince of saudi arabia he sent many of his officials to visit israel same as the crown prince or the prince of uh, dubai he sent many officials to israel and the purpose of this you know the the, the say it says the enemy of my enemy is my friend the enemy of my, of my enemy is my friend, right? So the Saudi now, they are not terrified from Israel. Israel will never attack them. They knew that. The Emirati, they are not worried from the Jews. So now what's happening, there is a fight in the front created from the Jews and the Sunni, which is very unique. I mean, those are the enemies. Now they are going to get in closer. So Netanyahu now, he start mentioning that we have many friends who they are Arab, and he is not lying. Actually, uh, he when he make a friend, friends, you know, between countries, there's no friendship. You know, it's a business, nothing personal. So, the the, the reason they are getting close together because those countries are terrified because of Iran, and Israel is a major power army in the area. So, if a war happened. The Saudi, they would love to see Israel protecting Saudi Arabia. Now, as I know, that USA will never let Israeli get involved directly unless they have to. Because remember, they don't want to make it look like as the Jews attacking the Muslims. It's a very sensitive topic. So, unless the Saudi themselves, they announce that they want Israel to join them in this war. And I will not be surprised if they do. If they find themselves desperate and they need the help of Israel, they will do. However, I believe Israel will focus only in the puppet of Iran in their area, which is Hezbollah, Hamas. And they will not be involved in any attack in Iran because USA will not even let them do so. Uh, I was watching uh, like Iranian uh, news. You will see the president. He says we don't want war with Iran, with the, with the USA. And then you see the army leader saying, "If the American attack us, we will torture them and we will make them shish kebab." Their their air air uh, air uh, uh, carrier, they will they will destroy them in five minutes. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. We know that this is will happen immediately. I mean, the American, they are just waiting for you to shoot them and they will die. So, you if you learn, listen to the news in Iran, you will notice that there's two kind of tones. One is saying, we don't want war. And the other one saying, we will not want war. Allahu Akbar, Jihad, Allahu Akbar, death to America, Allahu Akbar. So, you know, this is the two face of the Qiyya. I don't know, some of you told me that Imam Tawhidi, he was invited by David Wood, correct? If you listen to Tawhidi, you will learn about the Shia. The Shia are sneaky people. The Shia are very sneaky people. Russia will never be involved. 
actually it's for the benefit of Russia if this war happen this is for the benefit of Russia there's no question about that because uh, uh, USA will spend a lot of money in this war is going to be costly um, everybody will buy weapon and the Arab they are buying a lot of weapon from the Russian and the market will go good in business the, the Russian they don't care for Iran they will never care you know and actually the Russian they don't like the Iranian and now they are trying to get rid of them out of Syria so they can have Syria for their own right now Putin who is extremely smart he made the Syrian government give him the most important port of the country as an investment to the Russia which means the Russian are controlling the port the major port of the country and Putin he made the Russian sign an agreement to give him a base for army and a base in the sea two bases uh, for 99 years and this is why the president of, uh, of Syria now he don't he's not worried about Turkey no more he don't care for Turkey Erdogan he don't even dare to fart because the Russian are here but the Russian they don't care for Iran actually they want them to get weaker so they get out of Syria and that will make the big cake Syria for the Russian alone The Chinese, they are business people. The Chinese, they have business with the Arab, Muslim, Sunni more than they have with the Arab, uh, with the Shia. So they will sell them. Uh, Chinese, they sell everything for sale. You know, if you go to China, even they eat dogs. Everything is food. Turtle is food. Dogs is food. Cats is food. So the Chinese will never care for Iran. Because simply, they will never lose their business with the enemy, which is Saudi Arabia, and Emirates, and Bahrain, and etc. Uh, 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 Pakistan, they will never dare to involve too, because maybe many of you do not know that Pakistan may be a, ma a major Sunni country, but in Pakistan, there is a lot of Shia, and they are in the border of Afghanistan. So there's a lot of Shia in those areas, and they can cause big problems. Read the Indian remedy for health. What is that? Somebody told you I'm sick? My friend, I am like Tarzan. I just finished cutting the grass of my yard. What, what are you talking about? I feel like I want to go in war right now with Iran. Hello? Why you want me to read? What do you mean Indian? Uh, is, uh, is that a curry thing? I eat curry always. I like curry. Anyway, so what will happen next? Either the Iranian, they will start contacting secretly with the Trump, kissing his foot, asking for mercy, but they will not do it publicly because if they do it publicly that will make them lose a ground in the front of their people they were shouting for 30 years death to America and now they want to shake hands with America that means Trump he brought victory and they mean humiliated how we are saying to our people for 40 years 30 years death to America America is the big Satan Israel is the small is the, 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 the little Satan this is what the Iranian teach their children and this is the first thing they say in the morning before they enter school. Big Satan, little Satan. And I believe right now the Iranian they are doing that. They are contacting somebody in the middle, trying to find a common ground between Iran and Trump. But they will never go and shake hands with him unless really they felt like they are dying now I think Trump is going to do more harm if Iran did not go for negotiation very soon Trump is going to put more sanctions 
And I will not be surprised that Iran will be out of electricity, the same as happened to Venezuela. Because a country without income is a country without electricity, the same as what happened in Venezuela. It's not enough to have oil to run, like Venezuela have a lot of oil, but they cannot afford to keep the electricity running because the cost of electricity is not only the fuel. They cannot pay salaries, they cannot pay for parts, exchange, fixing, repairing, everything. And if people don't have money, people don't pay back, which means nobody pay the bills. All those, you know, government companies in Iran, everything is government company, which means the electric company is not a private business. So if everybody is go bankrupt, the, comp the, 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 the government will, will come to a moment, nobody is paying from the population their bills, water, electricity, taxes. The country is dead. And this is what they fear. They don't fear really much the sanctions of, uh, against them as much they fear what will happen next from the people inside the country. Remember the Shah of Iran, the king of Iran, he failed because of this. Because people were so angry. So when you make people hangry, then they get so angry and nobody can control them. As long your stomach is full and you are drinking your tea and your coffee and your house is warm, eh, you let the president, whoever he is there, do his garbage. But the second you are hangry and your children are crying for food, and you have none. There's nothing to lose. And that what is the plan of Trump. See, Trump is a very smart person. He want to destroy the Mullah's regime without shooting a bullet, at least from his pocket. He want to make the regime collapse, taking all their source or resource, no money coming, in and no money going out. No airplane parts, no machines. You cannot fix anything. You cannot buy anything. And whoever will sell you, we will punish him. Whoever buy from you, we will spank him. Very smart game. See, the American, they have many presidents since the, the mullahs of Iran took over. But they never have someone like Trump. All the previous president, I can title them with certification of donkey. All of them. They are certified donkeys. They do not know how to use the incredible power of USA. Trump, he knew what power is in his hand. Not, you know, always the, the American usually, if they want to force something, they go for war. But you can do it without war. War is very costly. And this is exactly what Trump is doing. Thank you, my friend, for, for the health remedy, but I am fine. And I'm not sick, my friend. Actually, I was thinking to marry four wives tomorrow. You made me worry now. Do you do you, do, I, do I look like sick or something? Look at look at my face. Do do, do guys I look like sick or something? Why why, uh, why this brother from India? He's a uh, uh, he's worried about my. Uh, I don't know. You made me worry now. Let me let me uh, look at myself. Hold on. Uh, because you made me really worry. Let us see. I will take a selfie and you let me know. I don't know. I mean, uh, your body you made me uh, really worry. I don't know what to do. Do do I look like something wrong with me? I don't know. I, I think I'm fine. I think I'm okay. Hashish is good. And everything is fine. I don't know. I don't know why you 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 are worried about me. 
Okay, I, I, I look good actually. I don't know. I, I don't understand why you are saying that. All right. This is what happened with those Shia. I mean, they think they are controlling the world. They take hashish. They carry a clash and cough. He put a knife around his waist and he think he is controlling the whole universe. You see them? They live, they live like as they are living from, you know, the, I don't know from which century. This is the party time, party, party. Until now, they carry knives in their waist. Do you see the knife, the big knife? You see how big it is? Until now. And the hashish in their hand, in the street, in the government, in the school, the teacher, he teach you mathematics and he is eating hashish. Actually, if you see their party, you will not believe it. Look at this party. Look at this party. Do you see the ground? Do you see the ground? I don't know if the ground is coming from your side. Do you see it? Hashish. The whole floor is hashish. Everybody is high. But anyway, anyway, you know, I, for me, I like to, I look, I don't know, for me, when I eat at this uh, thing, I feel, I feel good. And even my eyes, I feel like I'm flying. Actually, most of my books, I wrote, I wrote them after eating this. All right. Anyway. <clears throat> Let it go. Can you please, a Muslim making a donation saying, can you answer uh, Matthew 5, 18, 19? <laughs> no, we follow the commandment, uh, Amelia. You see, you are foolish. And as long as you are saying about following the commandment, did your prophet Muhammad follow the commandment of uh, God, which he gave them to Moses? Muhammad, he killed. Muhammad, he committed adultery. Muhammad was a thief. Muhammad, he lied. Muhammad, he allowed to swear and take an oath by a name of, not the name of God. What's wrong with you? It is you who break the commandment. Secondly, if Christians, if there is somebody, he killed himself a Christian, and he don't follow the teaching of Jesus, that will not make him a Christian. Correct, guys? So it's very foolish of you to say that. As an example, my name is a Christian prince. But it doesn't make me Christian because my name is a Christian prince. What makes me Christian is to be following Jesus. So you are very silly. Secondly, as long you are talking about, you see, I'm going to change the topic just for the sake of this, uh, uh, because she, she, uh, she made a donation, this Muslima. Muslima made a donation for me. Even Muslim made a donation for me. Hashish. Do you see what the hashish is doing? Do you see what the hashish is doing? I told you. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, if the Christians are doing something bad according to you, that because the Quran, sister, the Quran said, and the Hadith says, that Allah, He wrote for us our sin, we have to do it, we have no choice. Read with me, sister. And now don't tell me I'm going to change my, uh, like I'm not going to talk about it no more. I'm answering you. Is it your God, he said, that Allah, he wrote for everyone his partition of adultery? Even adultery, it is a decision made by Allah. So you are saying the Christians are not following the command of Jesus. Correct, guys? Is that what she said? Based on your prophet, nobody follow the command of Allah because the command of Allah is not to follow his command. Because your God, Allah, is a fool. He wrote for us our sin, including adultery, which means you have to do it. Are you there? Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery, which man will indulge. Do you see it? Which means when somebody do something wrong, break the command of God. 
according to Islam, it's not you who break it. Allah, he break you. He break you. <laughs> I mean, what a crazy cult. So if I commit adultery, the Christian don't do the Old Testament. No, we do the Old Testament. And why we well, hold on? What, what do you mean the Old Testament? What do you mean the Old Testament? What do you mean by the Old Testament? You are being a fool. First of all, your Quran says it clearly that the Torah was given to Moses only. When Jesus he says, I came to fulfill, still he said, It been said to you, but I say to you. And why Jesus he can't say that? Because he have the authority, he is God. It been said to you, do this, and I say to you. So you are being foolish because this is the commandment which we have to follow. Look like you are just quoting a verse, but you don't know what is written after. You are just a fool. And here in front of us, we will see another foolishness of Islam, that we are going to commit adultery, not because we are adulterous, but because Allah is the adulteress. Allah, he is the one who wrote our sin for us, and we have to do as he write. Do you see it? I, I played the whole chapter for you in the other day, why you are being a foolish. Guys, didn't I play the whole chapter? I played the whole chapter, not only that verse. And you will see the wisdom and the amazing, the beautiful thing. Why Jesus blessing those who spread peace, your prophet was spreading war and killing. Shame on you. Desperately. You know what, uh, Amelia? I'm going to read for you the holy chapter if you are willing to call me. Do, are you willing to call me? What do you think, guys? Do Amelia dare to call me? Allah will sponsor you. Don't worry. Allah will take you. Will, will bring Allah with you in your purse. Do you like to call me, Amelia? Amelia? I like to hear your voice. Do you like to call me? And I will change the topic just for your sake. Here we go. I promise. It says keep all the law. Yeah, all the law being give, given to us by Jesus. Thank you very much. Keep all the law. And this is a proving that Jesus is God. The earth and the heaven will go and my words will not go. This is against your stupidity, Muhammadan. You say that the Bible is corrupt. So the same verse you are saying is the same verse. And as long as you believe in that verse, and this is showing me the hypocrisy of the Muhammadan, that means you just admitted that Jesus is God. Do you see the stupidity? Secondly, who said to you that the Christians are perfect people and they never commit sin? Are you are you a person who don't commit sin? The, 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 the Moses law is the law of Jesus too, because Jesus is the God of Moses. You are being silly. <laughs> Guys, when the Jews, they came to stone a woman, when the Jews, they came to stone a woman for committing adultery, what did Jesus say to them? Did he say to them, the law doesn't say that? No. He showed them that they are a bunch of liars and hypocrites. They are stoning a woman, but there's no man. They are going after the weak women. And he said to them, well, if any of you is not like her, stone her. All of them, they are hypocrites. And this is exactly what the Muhammadan they do. They ask you to follow the commandment of Jesus, but they themselves, they will never follow any commandment of Moses. The law says, don't eat pig. Uh, this, is, this is very silly of you. You see, that's very stupid of you, actually. Jesus said, it's not what go inside your mouth, make you dirty, but what come from your mouth. Is that correct, guys? So the reason, the, the, the verse you are talking about, that was for the health and the benefit of the Jews. At that time, the pigs, they are not a growing in a farm, and they eat anything, including dead animals and dead people. You are being silly. Do you think the command of God is your food? That was for the health and the benefit of the people who live. God don't care if you ate uh, shish kebab or falafel. That will not affect God. This is silly of you. 
that that because you are silly and this is why your prophet he copied that but he cannot explain to us why if I ask you now why your prophet he forbid you from eating pork do you know why do you know why nobody can explain because Islam is a silly cult and Jesus said to us clearly that it's not what goes in your mouth make you any clean but what goes from your mouth so it's not food so that is not because of a cleaning as it is that pigs or animals who eat anything they are not a sheep or anything who eat only grass so there is a reason it's a health involved the same as the camel you're a prophet he eat the camel you know if we go right now we will see that Muhammad he knew that the Jews are forbidden from eating the camel but your prophet he eat the camel and he made it lawful so why you don't ask your prophet to follow the command of Allah if Allah is the one who gave the command to Moses because you are a hypocrite the reason we cannot eat the camel anyone knows why camel is not good to eat anyone knows why camel and rabbit are not allowed and all of this is health involved it's not about uh, uh, it's not about uh, dirty well, nothing will make you dirty <laughs> it's food but all is all of this is health involved camels because they are animals who live in the desert they observe all the water like they don't they, they do their best not to sweat actually they don't and not to pee a lot because they survive by water and that make their body keep a lot of poisoning material inside their meat same as pork pork pigs they don't sweat so it's a health issue so when we say that in Christianity it's not really important to eat pork or not but the Bible say clearly that this is about health issue it's for your benefit so if you don't eat pork it's better for you but not because God will be angry if you eat pork that because you are silly the rabbit the rabbit when he eat he have two kind of poo poo anybody knows what I'm talking about anyone knows what I'm talking about anyone have rabbits at home who have rabbits anyone have rabbits rabbits when they, uh, they they poop they have two kind of poop the poop which is their dirt and poop which they will eat again so the Bible says that the the rabbits are uh, and the Muslim they make fun of us they say uh, I don't know what the word in English like uh, you know like it's the same as the cow like when the cow take the uh, the the food from its belly and eat it again and again and you know I don't know what the word in English so they say this is wrong the rabbit don't do that don't the rabbit they do you idiot the Bible here is speaking about the rabbits eating their poop they are eating their poop and uh, the reason they eat their poop because this is how their system is there's two stomachs and the rabbit they are you know like a, there's actually a videos on YouTube they explain to you why it is bad to eat those meat not by Christians not by Jews not by Hindus by doctors so it's scientifically proven that this is not healthy for you but if somebody eat a rabbit he did not make God angry this is for your benefit to eat or not to eat it's very silly very stupid to think that God is about a rabbit or a camel now I want to ask you uh, uh, yeah Camille you want to you want to call me whatever your name do you want to call me give me your name in uh, Skype I will call you Amelia Give me your give me your Skype. I will call you. See, we change the topic just for this woman. <clears throat> anyway, we answer you. I mean, this is this is stupid of you. Nobody, first of all, nobody, nobody in this earth follow the command of God. Not a single person. For all of us, we are sinners. Is that correct, people? Do we agree, people? So it's very stupid of you 
to say Christian don't follow the command of God who follow the command of God all of us we are sinners unless you are your majesty is the angel like even angels they are fallen angels you are being silly and stupid and you think that God is about rabbit eating or a pork eating that because you are a low in the IQ your God became for you a rabbit and a pig oh I cannot eat the pork because God will be angry from me that's stupid that's because you are literally stupid that's because you don't have any spiritual belief inside you. You have ritual. And there's a huge difference between ritual and the spiritual. Do you do pray to Allah before you enter the bathroom? Otherwise, shaitan will play with your anus. That is a stupidity. So you are worried about the Christians eating pork and that will make them bad people? That's what will make us bad because we ate pork. I mean, talk about somebody rape, somebody he commit adultery, somebody he steal, somebody but eating pork, brother. We do all kind of sin. We am Mohammedan, but we didn't eat pork, brother. I remember once I was in the Philippines, and there's a Saudi guys uh, sitting in the table, and they have a bunch of hookers with them, and you can tell their skirt is like one inch. They have vodka they have whiskey and when the waiter or waitress came he asked her do you have halal food look how look how legit they are very genuine muslims do you have halal food he have a black label in the table and he's asking do you have halal food it's a very decent muslim look he have hookers because the quran says you can have hookers and i can show you the verses he have a black label the quran says don't drink uh, alcohol only in heaven but look he will not eat pork do you have halal food this is how silly they are because this is a silly stupid cult but I'm so glad that Muslims are donating for me any Muslim when I make a donation again so we can answer you too Johnny boy so your name is Amelia but your Skype is Johnny boy you are a boy under the name of Amelia <laughs> okay Johnny boy I'm going to call you <laughs> all right hold on Amelia is Johnny boy <laughs> uh, <coughs> hmm Did I copy the name correctly? Johnny. Yeah, hold on. It's a comedy time. There's many Johnny boy. Which one is you? There's one here, transgender. The second one is not transgender. Which one is you? Johnny boy, what's which one is you? Are you the one is X Men, X Men apples? Are you the X Men apples? I was expecting this X Men. Are you an X Men apples? Okay, X Men apples. Okay, hold on. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hello. Hello, my friend. Why, why you call yourself Amelia when you are a man? Ah, uh, it's my sister's account. Ah, this is your sister. Uh -huh. But even your Skype is X Men. Yeah. So you are X Men, or are you a woman now? Uh, no, I'm a man. Oh, uh, okay. I don't know because uh, this is confusing. Anyway, so uh, uh, Mister, what's your name? 
uh, John. All right, John. So you are saying to me, why the Christian don't follow Matthew 5? Uh, yeah, like hmm. it says um, until heaven and earth pass away, we should follow everything from the law. So. Sure, we should follow everything. And Jesus said, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do my will. So? Yeah. And? But he's referring to the law and the prophets. It doesn't matter. Like, all the law, all, all the law the is his law. It doesn't matter. Not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. And? Yeah, so does the, does the law change? Is it like, is he not referring to the... No, not change. Like, Isn't it Jesus? He said, is not what go inside your mouth, make you dirty, but the one, but what come from your mouth? So is that like a contradiction there? Or, no, this or, is not a contradiction. This is a contradiction for you. He's explaining to you that this is not about the command, the command of God. There's, first of all, there's two, there, there's a, there's a covenant between the people of Israel and Abraham and God and the people yeah. of Israel. We are not from the people of Israel. So there's a covenant which is between the Jews and God. We are not. Secondly, the Bible explained clearly that the command, how many command God gave to Moses? Uh, 600 something, I think. I can't remember. God, he gave uh, Moses 600? I thought there are 10. Um, 10, the 10 commandments, yeah. but Yeah, this is what is important. <laughs> the 10 commandment, and the, the important is, you will notice, that not to... Uh, uh, not to kill, not to steal, not, 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 etc. Those are what, this is the command of God. The rest is for your life, for your benefit. God don't care really if you eat shish kebab or you eat hummus. Otherwise, your God is silly. If you think God is, is like this, you are being a silly person. Yeah, but you know, like, Ten Commandments, like the Sabbath, like, no Christians keep Even the Sabbath, the Sabbath Jesus himself, Jesus himself, didn't, didn't he help a person who need help in the Sabbath? Uh, um, yeah, uh, I think yes, and, and the Jews they said to him, "How do you do that?" And then he said to them, "The Sabbath was made for the man, not the man made for the Sabbath." Yeah, it's true. Okay, it's so true. what you are saying, you have a wrong understanding of the command of God, and the same as the Jews, the Jews they worship the Sabbath, they forget worshiping God to the point that when a man he need help, nobody will help him because it's Sabbath. But this is not what the Sabbath for. Sabbath because people, they were working like donkeys and they they, 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 uh, they, they abused their own even slaves. But the Sabbath came to force them to stop working and even their servant, they will have a break. So it was not, the Sabbath was not for God. God do not need Sabbath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my friend, don't be silly, okay? Now, what is your religion? Um, I'm I'm Christian, but but okay. yeah, I was just like okay, my friend. No, yeah. you're you're not being Christian now because you are being silly. With my respect, to you, I don't want to insult you, <laughs> but you, you are being yeah. silly because you're trying to understand things in your in, in like you know you made a hole. Have you ever looked from a hole in the in a door, at a room? Um, like I did that yeah. when I was a kid, you know, to see if the if the teacher is coming. So, uh, when you look from this hole. You see only what is there in that hole but in the side and the left and the right you see nothing so you focus yeah. in little little thing and you think this is the law this is not the law you are doing the same as the jews even david he broke the law and he ate the bread which is given in the in the in the sabbath day uh, uh, uh i don't know what they call it in english like in the uh, uh in the temple uh, but because he was hungry so mm. when you have hunger you can eat whatever you want you know like so don't don't be limited god is not about a food god is not about a sandwich you were you are not hurting god by eating something he told you not to eat that is for your benefit the same as the sabbath it was for your benefit all the law of god is not for god it's for you mm. it's not made for god why god he need no. a law he do not need a law he made the law for you so you can survive your life and you can have a better future. So, uh, if you think the law is the law of God, uh, yes, it's coming from God, but it's not the law for God. It's for you, for yeah. your benefit, right? So please don't uh, don't be naive and don't be like a, a person who take uh, he take the outside. You know, uh, you know. When I was a when I was a kid, I like I like a lot sugar. Hmm? Yeah. So so they have like uh, I don't know what the name of the food in the, in the Middle East. So there is a food they do. They put like uh, cream in the top, all right? 
oh, and oh, yeah. underneath there's a bread. It's like a cake, you know. So uh, me, I go the whole tree. Let's have a big cake, but have a cream only in the top. I eat the cream and go go. You know, I never yeah, eat yeah. the rest of them because I like the cream. And one day, uh, uh, my mother she said to me, "Why you don't eat the whole thing? Why you are eating the cream only?" I said, "I don't think I like it." So I was not eating this for many years, and then one day I did bite the whole thing because I was hungry, and then I love it. So look what I, I was doing. I was refusing to eat something because I like something, and I don't want to try something. I was limited, limited in the way I see things, and I don't want to try to see what is behind the cream. Why mm. they put the cream there? Is the cream in the top of that thing? Do they match together or they are not there for a reason? They must be for a reason. So everything God he gave you, it was for a reason. But the reason is not for his reason. It's for your yeah. benefit. All right? Oh, so, yeah. Did I answer yeah, you? Just seemed, yeah, it's just seemed like for that verse, it's just like, yeah, it seemed like it was talking about. Yeah, but you know, you were like, uh, you made me think that you are a Muslim, by the way. Yeah, well, <laughs> the only reason I did that is just because I wanted to get like you know through because like if all right, just, like, my friend. Thank you very much for for, <laughs> yeah. for talking. Thank you. Thank you. I think you. You're welcome. Yeah, you were. Let us let us be smarter and not to be silly. You know, in the way we understand the the, the, the our God is 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 beyond food and pork and this is silly. Our God is not a buffet. Eat this and eat that. Everything was given to you for a reason. It's for your benefit, not for his benefit. The Messiah, he fasted for 40 days. I cannot fast for 40 days. So God, he gave us things we can do for our benefit. Anyway, see, you made us go out of our topic, man. What you did to us, unbelievable. We were talking about Iran and look where, where we ended. See guys what you guys would do to me? Hmm? Uh, anyway. Uh, do, if we have any Muslim would like to call please feel free. Somebody saying to me you are a kid. It's good to be a kid. Jesus said, if you cannot be like those little ones, you will never enter my kingdom. No problem. What about you? Are you a kid or a man? The prophet used to wear women clothes. Do you think he was doing that because he's a kid or because he's a man in women clothes? I'm not sure. I will let you answer that. Hmm? Hey guys, you want to call me for what? You know, we, like we usually we let Muslims call us, not not you guys. I mean, why do you want to call me? We answer this guy, that's it. All right. Now, let us go back to our topic, which is about Iran. So, uh, I I expect, let us, let us take this screen off from here. And let us go back. So I expect that the coming few weeks will be extremely sensitive. And uh, because they are sensitive, I think Iran will play what Shia always play. You know, Shia, when they feel weakness, they bow down. They are sneaky. When the storm come, they put their head down. When the storm leave, they stand up and they suddenly they are brave. I remember once, uh, the Israeli army, they landed in Beirut. They came in with airplanes, helicopter. And they landed here in the west of Beirut. Specifically, I will give you even the location. You believe it? Here. In this street they came down and they have dogs with them 
You believe it? With dogs? They landed in the middle of the highway. They arrested a big terrorist from Hezbollah with his bodyguards. They put them in the airplane. They searched for more people, which means they stayed down the ground for like 20 minutes. During the time, the Israeli army in the ground, all Hezbollah, all the Islamic militants, they disappear from the road. Nobody there. The city became empty. After the Israeli, they took the terrorist and they fly and they went and they disappear in the sky. Suddenly, all the heroes, they come with their guns, shooting in the sky. Like, where shooting? When they were there, you did not shoot. When they were in the ground, we did not see you. After they left and they took the guy. And this is exactly what Iran will do. If a Trump, he agree into a deal, the Iranian will say, see Trump, he fear us. But if a Trump come, they will bow down to his majesty. This is what they do always. The same is in with Hamas. Big speech, army show, guns, Allahu Akbar. The Israeli army go inside Gaza, bingo. They disappear under the ground. So if the American army decide to go in war with Iran, the Iranian regime will go under the ground. And when the Trump he leave, they will claim victory. But I don't think this time they will play, you know, they will be able to play the game leaving and coming back. Because I don't think Trump is going to leave them alone. This guy is not Obama. I believe Obama, actually. I believe he, clearly that Obama is a Muslim brotherhood. This is why he supported Iran. And he is the one, actually, who saved the, the regime of Iran from collapsing. He gave them more than a hundred billion dollars. So, uh, I expect that uh, the pressure will go more high on Iran and I expect that the Iranian they was and I believe uh, now there's nothing in the news saying that but I believe already the Iranian they are trying to kiss the shoes of Trump I mean come on what do you want we give you hummus we give you falafel what do you want he will force them to agree with all the conditions he want either this or die without even a war he closed their borders, nobody will buy from them, nobody will sell from them, they will be out of money very soon. So the only way for them to survive is to do taqiyya, as somebody said in the chat. Taqiyya, protection. Kiss his hand for now, for he can. we cannot break his hand. If they can break his hand, they will never kiss his hand. But now his hand is strong. And we cannot break it, so they will kiss it. Otherwise, Hezbollah, Iran, all those smarter groups is going to suffer very bad days to come. Now, still I believe Trump, he don't want really to go in war, but I think he is preparing for himself too, for such a thing. Because you never know, even sometimes you don't prepare to go for war, but sometimes things go out of your hand. You are putting too much pressure on them and they might break. They might break their terrorist groups. They might do something against American embassies, attack or something. So America might respond in a very aggressive way and the war goes. And as I said to you, the Saudi, I'm, I'm sure the Saudi, they will be happy to pay for all the cost of war if USA decided to attack Iran. The same exactly what happened when USA attacked Iraq to bring Kuwait back to Saddam, from Saddam Hussein. All the war is paid by the Saudi, the Kuwaiti, the Emirati. 
and actually USA made a lot of money from that day. So I will not be surprised if the Crown Prince and the King of Saudi Arabia and the Prince of, uh, of Emirat already they told Trump that any cost is going to come because of you attacking Iran, we are going to pay it off. Because they are desperately, they want USA to attack Iran because they are afraid if Iran attack them, USA, they might help them, but they might not get involved in the war. This is why now the, the Saudi, uh, as just I heard that yesterday, that the Saudi and the Emirati, they are asking USA to bring their troops and to have a basis on Emirat and in Saudi Arabia again as before. You see the stupid Saudi, they made a mistake. They asked the American to leave. When they asked him to leave, the Prince of Qatar, he took advantage of that. He asked the American to come to his country. So now Qatar is protected, Saudi is not for free. The Prince of Qatar is not worried about anyone attacking him. Who's going to attack him? And the American base is the biggest base in the world there. Nobody would there. So he asked them to come, not because he liked the American, but to seek protection. Do you know like the small fish, the one to swim with the shark? You know what I'm talking about? The small, tiny fish, the one who cleaned the, 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 the ears of the big fish? Right? This is what Qatar is, and this is what the Saudi is. All of them, they survive because of USA. But in the same time, we are kuffar, we are the infidels, we are filthy, we are dirty. But in the same time, we are the one who saved their life when their ass is going to get spanked. Now, if you ask me really, what Trump should do? If I am president, I will not even involve. Let the Saudi and the Iranian go in war. And you sit and watch. Both of them, they sponsor terrorism. Both of them, they hate America. Both of them, they hate the Christians, atheists, Jews, Hindus, all of them. So why you want to defend them? Let the evil fight the evil. Evil countries fighting evil countries. What our business? But this is what we are saying. But politics is a different story, as you know. Because there's many issues involved. Oil, money, eh, you know. But the fact is that both are evil and let the evil spend their money in burning each other. Why I'm going to, you know, because if we, if we save them, they will not save us. They will never defend us. And they are behind all terrorist groups in the world. The Shia, they are behind it, and the Sunni as the Shia, both are sponsoring terrorism. What about the Saudi? They have no human rights. Why the regime in Iran is a, is a bad country because they have a bad human right? What about the Saudi? <laughs> see the hypocrisy so the hypocrisy is very well known in the West when it's come to business and uh, uh, who is our friend both of them they practice the same thing in Iran they beat a woman up in the street if she don't wear hijab just today they arrested more than 70 women because they sponsor a fashion show and God knows what they would do to them in jail I'm sure they will rape them they will do all kinds of crimes you can imagine where is the whole world? Nobody talk about it. In Saudi Arabia, you, your family disappear. I mean, the guy, he went to the embassy. He never came out. He came out shish kebab. <laughs> and that's it. Did you see any Western country cut their relationship with the Saudi? No. Did they put sanctions on? No. Nothing. I mean, well, who care? They are money, business. But if you are a poor country and you break the law, the law, huh? The law. Then they will practice all the sanctions in the world on you. Like, you know, Hillary Clinton, when she wiped her uh, computer after she received a letter from the court that those are evident, 
If you do that yourself, you will stay at least for five years in jail. You as a citizen. But Hillary Clinton, she cannot go to jail. Her husband was a president. See, always the poor, if you don't have a seat belt, you are in trouble. But if you are from those who they are high, huh? Uh, not only seat belt, I mean, what seat belt? You take the whole government with you. So, in this world today, there's no justice, and it's not about fear, and it's not about evil. It's about business. The war about, or the war with Iran, is not because Iran is the only evil countries. All those countries there, they sponsor terrorism, and all of them, they don't sponsor human rights. And there, if you go there, you will disappear, you and your family. You see, if I am living in, in, the, in, in the Middle East, I will not be able to survive for two minutes. Like imagine now I'm talking in any country in the Middle East, I will be arrested immediately and they will make me shish kebab literally, live on camera. So the American is defending who and why? I agree Iranian government is a very filthy, ugly one and I hope they will collapse very soon. But the rest are no better. All of them are the same. Garbage in, garbage out. We give a lot of money to Erdogan. Erdogan, Turkey actually, survived because of USA. If Trump now make a tweet, actually almost, he made two tweets, the, 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 the currency of uh, Turkey lost more than 70%. What about making three tweets? Erdogan, he have hundreds of thousands of people in jail. And we give them money. We sponsor them. Having our uh, army base in Turkey is a big help to Turkey. Because America spent billions of dollars every year in Turkey. So, why do we sponsor those evil people? Because when you have an evil mind, you sponsor evil. So, Trump, maybe he's a smart, but he's not going against Iran because Iran is bad. Otherwise, if this is the case, should go against all the bads, including his dear friends in Saudi Arabia. But we are very selective in our cherries. Who is bad? The one we want, we make him bad as we wish. What about the Prince of Qatar? The Prince of Qatar, he put his father in jail. Imagine. He did not came, become a prince by himself. No, he, his father went in a trip. He came back in the airport. They arrested him. They put him in jail. And he announced himself to be a prince. So, in the world today, even government who claim that they are defending human rights and the good against the bad, they are evil too. As an example, if we go right now to Syria, hmm? if you go in this area, this area is controlled by Al Qaeda. Let us draw so you guys can see what I'm talking about. This area here is controlled by Al Qaeda. Each time the Russian and the Syrian army want to attack this area, Germany, France, America, uh, uh, England, I mean, all of them, oh, no, don't do that, don't do that. There are civilians. So, uh, suddenly they love civilians, they prefer civilians. There's Al Qaeda there. There's more than almost 200,000 fighters. Most of them, they are Al Qaeda. Terrorists, literally terrorists. Why are you going to protect them? The answer is very simple. If those group, they disappear from here, then Russia will start the honeymoon in Syria because now all the enemies is gone. So they want to leave a pimple in the ass of the Russian, which is called Al-Qaeda. <laughs> Not because they are defending civilians. We know the story. 
Each time they try to destroy the Al-Qaeda there, right away, they start claiming that the Russian and the Syrian, they will use chemical weapon to kill Al-Qaeda civilians right away. And then the American and the French, they will attack the Syrian army right away. Simply, they are protecting Al-Qaeda because the existence of the Qaeda is the only problem left for the Russian almost to control all the country. ISIS is gone. Erdogan will leave sooner or later. He's a puppet for the Russian. He don't dare to play with them. Who is left? Only those. So we have to keep them there. Otherwise, the Russian, they took Syria. So the outside is to protect civilians in Syria. But the reality is, we don't want the Russian to start their honeymoon. We want to keep the Russian in trouble. Get the point? ISIS has gone as a, as like a bigger group, but they are they would they would never be gone. ISIS has existed since Muhammad time. Well, since Muhammad time, those terrorists are exist. This is ISIS. Every Muslim believe in jihad is ISIS. What? Don't fool yourself with the name. There's nothing. It's called ISIS actually. It is what Muhammad started. Islamic State, the Caliphate. That's it. All of them, they believe in the Erdogan want to have a, he want to be the caliphate. <laughs> Every Muslim leader, he want to be the caliphate, if he can. All of them are the same. But anyway, what I'm trying to say to you, that don't make them fool you when they speak in the West, they are protecting democracy and civil rights and all this garbage. They don't, and they don't care. They don't care. Look, the Saudi, they are, shelling and bombing Yemen every day for the last three years. Do you see anybody put sanctions on them? So why if the Assad, he shell Al-Qaeda, they keep sanctions on him for the last seven years? For a very simple reason. He's a friend with the Russian, he's a friend with the Iranian, and we are angry from him. If he was of our friend, he can kill as many as he want. I mean, kill, why not? When Saddam Hussein was our friend, Saddam Hussein was a slaughtering Iraqi, nothing changed. And we were arming him. Osama bin Laden was our, our boy. <laughs> CIA, even senators, they went there and they met with them. The same as John McCain, he went and visited the terrorists in Syria. How was they do that? Evil. Nothing changed. And you know, the American are very naive people think that uh, America is really sponsoring freedom. You're right. Where? How? How, how you can wear? Where is that? Right? So, uh, the evils are friends to each other. So, anyway. I don't like war and I hope Trump he will not be a fool and he will not really attack Iran I hope he will let the Arab and the Persian deal business with each other he should be watching forcing his rules trying to force this ugly regime to stop sponsoring terrorism without war and if the war happened uh, the American, they should not involve directly. They should let the Saudi, the Arab, versus the Persian. Both are Muslims. And you know what? When you involve, they say the Kuffar. The Kuffar, look what the Kuffar did. Let them fight each other. What's your business? Just to show you how stupid the American when they involve in the war with Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein, he took the Kuwait. The Kuwait is a very tiny, small country. It's like a farm in Texas. This is Kuwait. If George Bush, the father, did not take back Kuwait, until now, the Muslims, Arab, they will be fighting each other. And if they are doing that, I guarantee you there is no ISIS and there is no Al-Qaeda. Because their money and their resource will be spent fighting each other. 
But the American, they agreed money. They came, they kicked out Saddam Hussein, and now because they are infidels, that give a sponsor for terrorist groups to grow. Because the American came to our land, Allahu Akbar, Muslim Muslims, we have to fight the Christians, Allahu Akbar. George Bush, he said the crusade, Allahu Akbar, stupidity. So they gave them reasons to grow. When Saddam Hussein was fighting Iran for nine years, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar, Emirat, Iran, bankrupt. That was perfect time. Let them go bankrupt. Because those people, if they don't bankrupt, they will use their money to sponsor terrorism. Let them fight each other. What's your business? Why you want to sponsor anyone? It's not even smart. Because after you save their ass, they will spit at you. Here we go. You give Kuwait back to the Kuwaiti. Do the Muslims appreciate America? No, after that, they did 9-11. You give Bosnia, which is not the land of the Muslims, to the Albanian. Did the Muslims appreciate you killing 10,000 Christians in Serbia? No, they did 9-11 to you. Always America sponsor the evil power. Never sponsor the good one. Why are you going in Bosnia? Do you know what Kosovo is? Kosovo is the heart of the Serbian people. This is this is where their first king was born. This is a Serbian land. How you give it to the Muslims? Just because they are friends to the Saudi family, the Clinton family, the corrupt family, money. They are willing to go for war for the sake of the Saudi. And I'm afraid now the same that Trump, he might do something stupid and he go for war for the sake of the, his friends, the Saudi. He should not do that. Our money should not be spent on the Saudi. They have their money. So either he have to force them to pay for it. Every penny he spend and even double or he should not go in that war. Let them work out clean out their lies enough is enough so anyway let us see what will happen in the coming month i believe the coming month is going to be very sensitive and i hope the war will not erupt but i believe strongly that the Iranians are smarter than this as i said the shia are very sneaky people and they don't they don't fight big guys. They fight only tiny ones. You know what I mean? They are the kind who they are brave only in the front. Sh shouting is different. Like saying death to America is different from doing death to America. This is totally different story. So they were shouting for 40 years. Are they willing to do what they are shouting? They will never even dare to think about it. Cowards. So, in the coming month, either the Iranian, they will start making troubles for countries around them in the neighborhood, the Emirati, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, which means they will use their dogs to bite around, but they will not dare to open an open war, because that will open the gate of hells, the hell on them. So, let us see what will happen, and I hope you guys did enjoy this uh, uh, a topic um, you don't you do not need to download this video i mean it's a just dir dirty politics but the middle east is very very uh, you know i am from there and i feel sorry for for what's happening to us i mean look we are lucky we have everything we have oil money but we don't have happiness for very simple reason because of the cult of islam wherever islam goes Peace disappear. Islam come from the window, peace run from the door. A lot of money. But nobody is happy. And all what they do, or let us say, 
uh, they claim to have a glory. As an example, Imarat. If you see Imarat, let us show you some images of Imarat. If you look at the at the at this country, high buildings, fancy buildings, money, you know, it's a very corrupt, ugly, disgusting country. Slavery, sex slaves, corruption, madness, prostitution. However, all those high buildings will be empty in less than five days if the war started with Iran. And the whole economy of this country will collapse because everybody will flee. Citizens of this country are not even the size of a building in China. Everybody there is a foreigner. There's no local. So if the war started, this country will disappear, and those the business of real estate will disappear, will collapse. All those buildings, nobody will buy even a building for a dollar. And by the way, this has happened almost three years ago or four years ago. There was next to the airport more than 25,000 cars left for free. And nobody want to take them. Why? People, they go to the airport, they fly, they're running away, and they never come back. Because the economy was collapsing. So, if really war will happen with Iran, that territory will suffer badly. And those countries who you might think that they have economy, they are going to collapse left and right. Especially a country like Emirat, based on nothing. Uh... Anyway, let us see what will happen. I hope that war will not happen, but you never know. People there are crazy, and everybody is high. And in the land of Hashish, Hashish rule. So you never know. So I want to say thank you guys for being here. Uh, don't forget to download the previous video, because I'm going to take it down very soon, maybe in 15 minutes. Download it, take it. And until I see you, maybe tomorrow, I'm not sure. Uh, because I might be uh, doing war too, you know. I might take from some camels and join the, my brothers, the Saudi, to fight against the infidels, the Shia, Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Guys, if you watch, if you watch the, the now every Arabic TV, in the TVs you see two kind of people. People saying the F4 to the Saudi, and to the Sunni and the people saying the F4 to the Shia this is what you see in Islamic TVs now very disgusting very ugly hateful people brother brother you open a, a, a Sunni uh, station brother what 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 they have in Iran they will have they will fight America with what with Muta brother huh they will ask their women and brother to take off their panty. This is what they're talking about. You go to the Shia channel. They say, huh, the Saudi, they want to fight Iran with what, brother? Huh? They want to throw rice at us? <laughs> rice? Huh? They, they, their belly is big, brother? Huh? The Sunni, the fat people? I wish you speak Arabic because you will die laughing at the propaganda of both. Oh, the F word, the Prophet, he said the F word. What's wrong with the F word for Islam? Even the prophet, he said, did you F her? What's wrong with you? Come on, show respect. F word is something nice. And <laughs> What about immigrant? You mean immigrant in Europe? You see this immigrant thing. I mean, European, you know, uh, we don't want to be hypocrite. Europe is controlled by a guy. His name is George Soros. You don't have government. You don't have counselor. You don't have ministers. You don't have immigration. You have an emperor, his name is George Soros, he owns Europe. And he is the one who is forcing you to accept immigrant because that will give him a very cheap labor. As simple as that. They need them. 
they need cheap labor. They are not bringing the immigrant because they are nice and kind. No, they are hoping that those will accept anything. Instead of bringing somebody who's a German and he will ask you for four or five thousand euro at least as a salary plus health insurance plus 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 plus. So why you want to do that? Get someone he is an Afghani for five hundred euro. Don't fool yourself. It's all about business. All about business. All about money. But look what's happening. In Australia, the left, they hoped that they are winning. And almost, they, they were saying the same as what happened to Trump. They say that Trump will lose. And the Australian, the right wing, they won. That's good. Here, the American, they won. And I believe what happened because of this, that right wings, and you know, when I say right wings, I don't mean racist groups. We don't want that, those people. We don't want racist, ugly, stupid people. We want conservative people who love their country and they are not racist. They are doing things because it's right. So I hope Europe is going to notice the mistakes they are doing by obeying George Soros and his false authority over them. George Soros became a man to the point he threatened, imagine, a country like Hungary. I mean, how a businessman can he threat a country? This is how powerful he is. This is a guy who owns countries. He owns countries. He controls hundreds and thousands of TV stations around the world. His money is everywhere. Even in Emirat, even in Saudi Arabia. He is, you know, actually... Uh, they are involved in everything, even at Jazeera TV. Tommy Robinson is a poor guy. His people left him alone. He stands to defend them, and then his people, they betray him. They left him alone. The guy he was arrested, uh, nobody care. And instead of striking, asking the government to free him, putting pressure on the government, striking in the streets, you know... Uh, uh, they let him go and be in jail. Yeah, they betrayed him. The same as the Trump. Trump, before the election, he went to more than 70 cities in USA, hoping that the American, they will go and vote. And when the vote time came in the Congress, they did not go. The guy is over 70 years old. Every day, every day, sometime in the same day, he go to two or three cities. They betray him. We always betray the one who try to protect us. We always do that. Because we relax, you know, we don't care. As long as my TV is here and I'm watching the Billy Dancing, why I care? You know, there's only few people who care and the rest, they are watching. They will not care until something really bad happens, right? What a huge protest. They did not do anything. They should stay in the street until they release him. What, you go for half hour? What about you put tents? Put tents in the streets. Stay there. Tons of thousands until they release him. And you will see right away they will release him. But you don't care. Uh... Anyway, you know, as I said, always, always, if you are a good guy, you are alone. You have to, you have to know. I remember once, I was, I was, uh, I was a kid, you know, and I have like five, six guys with me, and there's, and from the other side, there's like a bunch of guys coming to fight us. So I was like, yeah, okay, uh, okay, and then I, and suddenly I was talking, and nobody's answering. I look behind me, there's nobody. They're gone. I was alone. <laughs> I'm talking and I'm walking like I'm so brave and walking alone in the front of them. And then why they are not answering those guys? I look behind me. There's nobody. They are gone. They left me alone. And this is exactly what they did with this guy, Robinson. He fight for their rights. He tried to save his country. He don't hate anyone. He is not racist. He is not uh, Islamophobia, as they say. This is Islam is a dangerous cult. It's not. There's no phobia. The, the, it, it is them who have a phobia.
but when you are you know the, I, I know what to say uh, let it go let it go <laughs> let it go but anyway but that is not a reason to make you give up the good fight because for me I believe that one person one person can change the world never give up my friend the Messiah our Lord himself he have only 12 followers only 12 and one of them he betrayed him don't give up so Apostle of Christ one of them he went to Egypt he made all of Egypt Christians one of them he went to to to, uh, to Karkala in India he made almost the whole city uh, uh, Christian uh, uh, so one person can do a lot so never never give up the Lord always will be with you as long you are with him and he will bless your work so one day I said to myself if I start talking in English who's going to listen to a guy who is English is not even good what you can do I mean what you can do really I did a lot and my videos are my witnesses thousands of Muslims left Islam if not if not I don't want to say exaggerate I don't know actually how many but more than thousands so one person can do a lot but the key point is never give up the second you give up you are the loser either you start and you continue and you finish it or never start imagine you drive in the highway and you are now in 70 percent but you decide oh it's getting too long i cannot continue that make you a loser the trip is long but you will be victorious the day you arrive and i arrived from long time ago i accomplished a lot and actually even if i stop now that's it it's too late for anyone to delete what i said my videos is all over i will die and i assure you after 50 years from today after i die if i die today still they will find my videos in youtube and for sure i have my books too so never give up and always be confident and be faithful and then the fruits will recognize you and people will recognize you from your fruits from their fruits you shall know them how much time you give to the lord is the same time that the lord he will give to you to give you his mercy if you are a person who spent one minute in your life for the lord he will not even spend a minute for for you why because why you, you you never remember me i gave you life you live all your life what you did what you did you bought a car you bought a house you open a business what you did to me this is something you did to yourself what you did to me so always remember that time goes and if you think you are young no you are not today you are a kid tomorrow you are 70 and 80 and 100 and you will die and if you think you will not die eh, go to the graveyard and see how many people buried every day every day and your day will come it's just a matter of time and the clock is it clicking thank you guys very much for being here may the lord bless you and keep you all safe christ is lord and islam is false and see you soon again bye bye